reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son and he named him Jesus. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. <clears throat> they prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Thank you. So um, there is a long-standing tradition in Rome to have a nativity scene that's life-size. This has been going on for a long, long time. Um, this year is uh, a little bit different. The Pope chose this year uh, to kind of go back to the origin of this story, uh, of this practice, excuse me, um, which came from St. Francis. And so St. Francis of Assisi went to the Holy Land and was incredibly moved. And when he came back, he had this burning sense that it's not fair that others don't have an opportunity to get a better sense of what it's like to be um, in the Holy Land and in particular in Bethlehem. And so St. Francis, um, when he came home, he made arrangements for like his first Christmas back to um, go to the town of, of, of Greccio. I think he left. So uh, my, my buddy, Ross Vincenti, who was here, he did have to get to something else. His wife is from that town in Italy. And so, um, so he, he felt like that town most resembled Bethlehem. And so he had a friend there who had a farm, and he, he went there, and he reenacted on Christmas Eve in a, a stable barn-type thing, uh, with, with live animals and, um, 
and, and, and he actually had mass, and he preached. And it was so important to him to give people a chance to get a, just a taste, even if you can never get to the Holy Land, of what it was like. So the Pope this year decided that the nativity scene was going to represent that a little bit more than usual. And so he has statues of St. Francis and some of the other people who helped make that happen that day there at, uh, at the nativity scene in Rome. So uh, that's one thing that was going on. Now, I've got two main words that I'd like to use to, to focus my reflection here with you. And the first of them is, is wonder. So wonder and awe is one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it is a gift that comes to us through the grace of the Holy Spirit when we, we come into the presence of God and come into His marvelous deeds. And so um, I think that, you know, the, the, the story, one of the, I chose Matthew in, in part because of the, the Magi. So the Magi are an example of this. They travel a long ways. When they finally get to Bethlehem and they come to the cave, the first thing they do is they are overjoyed, which I think is part of wonder. They prostrate themselves, and then they open up their treasures and bring gifts, right? And so um, to, to grasp some of this wonder, I'd like to share with you a bit of a personal experience. So uh, those of you who know me a little bit know that one of my mentors, I would argue to say one of my, my, one of my greatest mentors as a priest is Cardinal Sean O'Malley. He's the Archbishop of Boston. And he's about to retire. He's going to turn 80 this year. And um, I had the great privilege of living with him for a summer when I was a, a young seminarian and uh, was actually studying for his diocese at the time. And I was with Father Peter Nasetta, and we lived for a summer with him. And that summer was spectacular. Now, one of the things that I, I particularly love about him is that he is truly brilliant. I'm not, probably the most brilliant person that I've ever kind of known. Um, he got a doctorate in Spanish and Portuguese literature from Catholic U without ever taking an undergraduate class in Spanish or Portuguese. He just learned them. He speaks about five languages fluently, and I know that he has addressed crowds in about 30 languages. Um, he was uh, chosen by the Capuchins. He's a Capuchin friar wears his habit almost everywhere that he, his brown habit and sandals, almost everywhere that he goes, right? And when he was ordained a priest, he was soon thereafter chosen to be the, the, the director of the, the Capuchin College, which with all kinds of professors and older priests in the community, and he was chosen to be the superior at the earliest possible moment, right after he was ordained a priest. He was chosen to be a bishop at the age of 39. And it was around that time that I got to know him. Um, he has been sent by the popes to go cover the most difficult diocese in the country. So the first breakout, for those who remember, of the sex abuse scandal was in Fall River. Father Porter. They took him from the Virgin Islands and sent him to go solve that issue. He went from there down to a diocese in Florida where a bishop had to be removed for some issues. He didn't last there for nine months. When Boston opened up after the whole thing with Cardinal Law, and so they sent him to Boston to help work on that. He became a you know, cardinal, and the, the, this particular pope has put him on that, that particular council of cardinals. It's been his very close advisors as he's been trying to you know, revise uh, some of the workings at the Vatican. So what, my point with that is that uh, he's a very, very gifted 
and humble man. And that summer, I had a chance to, to live with him. And I went swimming at the beach with him. And um, one night after a confirmation, we went to a church. They had just renovated the church, and he wanted to say hello to the pastor and take a peek at the church. This was like 9.30 at night. We knock on the door. The, the pastor was a little surprised. We go in and take a look at the church. It has a new organ. He sits down and begins to play the organ like you wouldn't believe. Just a very, very gifted and talented uh, person, right? Well, we ended up moving to, back to serve for this diocese. So I moved away from his diocese. He was no longer my bishop. I went to a separate seminary. He continued to call me on a regular basis when he was no longer my bishop at the seminary. And when, when the, the uh, <laughs> this was before cell phones, for those of you who are younger, and we had a phone on our hallway. We didn't have phones in our individual bedrooms at the seminary. And when he would call, he would say, it's Father Sean, is Jack there? And, and, if he, and if I wasn't there, he would leave a message, just tell Jack that Father Sean called, right? And so here, here is my point. I, I, it was, it's a, such a privilege and an honor for me to know that man. And to have him at that level of the church know me and, and do those little things for me, it was unbelievably powerful. God, and he came down here like this to show us how much he loves us and to show us that he understands and that he cares and that he's not just going to rain from the heavens above and tell us to get our act together and tell us to work it out on our own and find a way to salvation. But he, he came down here and he dove in. And the humility, I mean, this is the thing that I love about Cardinal Sean, the humility of God. He was born in a place just like this. Cold, look at John shivering in the back there, <laughs> right? Cold, this was God's home. How amazing. My second point's a lot shorter, for those who care. <laughs> and it's the idea of the treasures, the gifts. Those magi, wise men from all over the world, supposedly, when they came again, right, they were overjoyed that they had found what they were looking for. They prostrated themselves, and they opened up their treasures and gave gifts. And that's what I, my second point is that I want you to think. We spend an awful lot of time and energy thinking about gifts, either that we're giving or that we're receiving. How much time do we think about gifts that we want to give to Jesus? And so my challenge to you is this. Um, I want you tonight to think of a gift you're going to bring to church on Christmas Day for Christ. I want you to pick a gift, prayerfully pick a gift. What might that gift be? Maybe this year you want to invite Christ in a serious new way to be king of your heart this year, to reign in your life like never before. Maybe you want to rearrange your life so that you don't go a day without spending 15 minutes in prayer with the sacred scriptures. Maybe you want to go to confession if by chance you haven't been in a long time. Maybe you want to attempt to reconcile with a family member or an old friend or even an enemy. 
Maybe you want to make a firm determination to end a particularly harmful and even sinful behavior in your life. Maybe you want to genuinely accept God's forgiveness for a major mistake in your life. I leave it to you. But I invite you on Christmas morning, bring a gift to Jesus. So, two questions for you. Will I come with genuine wonder and awe to the foot of the creche this December 25th? And what gift will I bring to Jesus to celebrate His birthday? Let's finish. Uh, well, let, let's give a thank you to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph for being here. So... <laughs> Mitch and Miranda Kuchis, right? And their baby is, is not a boy, it's Lucy. But that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. Um, li Lily, 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 excuse me. So, um, so thank you so very much for doing this. Lily is two, just over two weeks old. So God bless him for doing this for us. So let's finish um, with a helmet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.